Okay, I think we can start. Um, welcome everybody. My name is Remco Rosenboom. I'm the general manager of infrastructure services at the S30, and I'm moderating this evening event. Um, we're here today about to talk about uh, some recent concerns brought forward by the community regarding uh, uh, a storage container that will be placed uh, besides the uh, water treatment plant on the corner of Elvisau and Fisher. Um, I wish to acknowledge that we're the Sunshine Coast as an organization is operating, Sunshine Coast Regional District is operating on the um, territories of the Squamish and the Seashell Nation, and that the water resource we're actually talking about tonight is located within the Squamish Nation uh, territory. I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're breaking up. I can't, hear, can't understand what you're saying. You're breaking up. Apologies. How is that for everybody, anybody else? It's it's okay for me here on Gambier. It's okay. Kate. I'll, I will try to speak a little bit slower then. So I wanted to say that we're uh, here tonight uh, to talk about the uh, the water resource uh, that is on the Squamish Nation lands. It's there, uh, it's their territory, and we appreciate uh, the stewardship, uh, their stewardship over the lands over the last uh, centuries. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everybody that um, this meeting is going to be recorded and we placed on YouTube. And it will be, uh, I'm aiming for to have a respectful and uh, fact based dialogue uh, with all the attendants here in the room tonight. I will be monitoring the chat. Uh, so if you have a question for staff, uh, there's room to answer those at the, uh, uh, to, to ask them throughout the meeting. And I will uh, moderate the discussion with staff at the end to clarify uh, any answers that you might have. Um, before we, so we have, I'm not alone tonight. I have two, uh, three other staff members with me tonight. Uh, our CEO, uh, Chief Executive Officer Dean McKinley is currently traveling, but he's joining us by phone. Um, I have Jesse Waldorf. He's our, maybe Jesse, you can raise your hand. He's he is, yep, there he, he is. He's our manager of capital projects and uh, responsible for the construction uh, phase of this project. And we have Cody Abbott. And um, she is our superintendent for the operations of the facility. And they're both here to uh, take part in the presentation. Um, I will start, Jesse, maybe you can take it away. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah good, good evening, I'm trying, I'm trying to do myself. myself. My apologies. All right, let's try that. Can everybody, can everybody hear me? Okay, um, so I'm going to I'm going to assume the audio is okay. So it is. Go what ahead. is yeah, sodium hypochlorite? 
sodium hypochlorite is a, a substance more commonly known as bleach. It's a non-flammable, clear, yellow tinted liquid. Um, sodium hypochlorite is used to disinfect drinking water as part of the water treatment process. And uh, Canadian data from 3,090 drinking water facilities in nine provinces, what's it? Sorry, nine provinces and territories uh, indicate it's the most common disinfectant used in 78% of water treatment plants. And just so we're clear on exactly what's being stored uh, at the Grantham's water treatment plant, the uh, material we are storing is 6% concentrate uh, sodium hypochloride. Um, it's NF. Sorry, NSF certified for treatment in drinking water. Um, it's a solution. It, sorry, the six percent sodium hypochlorite solution is not considered dangerous under transportation or dangerous goods regulations. Um, there will be roughly eight barrels um, of the six percent sodium hypochlorite solution on site, and the sodium hypochlorite used at Grantham's Landing uh, water treatment plant is less concentrated than many retail bleach solutions such as uh, Clorox disinfecting bleach. Um, it's gonna be stored uh, in a container that's designed specifically for the uh, storage of chemicals. Um, what you see on this slide uh, with the photo is the built-in spill containment that's capable of storing or holding 150% of the liquid we plan to store on site. The container is constructed specifically of non-combustible materials and equipped with temper con control ventilation. Um, and we have received all the appropriate approvals from the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure uh, for the location of the container on site. Why are we storing this at the Grantham's wastewater treatment plant? Um, sodium hypochlorite and the storage in the container is a safer and lower risk option to storing it inside the wastewater treatment plant facility. Uh, it's a way to limit the number of delivery trucks that come to the plant, uh, which reduces the risk of spills uh, and frequent handling. It's a WCB compliant method for on-site storage. And sodium hypochloride will be pumped from the barrel stored in the container to refill the tank in the facility. This minimizes uh, any risk of spills and handling and makes the work environment safer in the plant itself. Um, before we get into next steps, we just wanted to highlight a few of the things that the uh, Chapman Water Treatment Plant or the Grantham's Treatment Plant has uh, done for the community. It provides an additional 4.6 million liters of water per day to those that are accessing the Chapman water system. Uh, it increases supply during times of drought and has delayed uh, stage three and stage four water restrictions significantly depending on our environmental conditions in the year. Um, part of the project replaced a significant amount of AC or asbestos containing water main pipe uh, with ductile iron pipe material. And it has improved safety along the roadway with an additional one kilometer of gravel pathway for pedestrians and has improved uh, fire safety provisions with new hydrants in several locations. Um, uh, sorry, many ben sorry, may benefit those living in close proximity to the hydrants uh, by reducing insurance costs. And uh, maybe I will turn it back to Remco here. Thank you. Thank you. In terms of next steps, what we're going to undertake is um, the external uh the pictures uh on the presented on the slides show the external side how the container is currently looking uh we'll do some uh wrapping or cladding of the uh and or cladding of the container so that the appearance is a little bit more uh even more pleasant um and uh we did some hydro seeding last year uh at site it didn't really took off so there is not a lot of grass growing at the moment. To do any hydro seeding at the moment is doomed to fail as well. 
And together with further hydro seeding uh, attempts later this year, we also um, install some further planting on the property to uh, to cover up some of the concrete walls, etc. Um, we are going to. There will be a lot of activity on site between April 8th and 11th as well. During the time, we uh, have to do one additional test to make sure that we are compliant with the ministry's uh, requirement, and that is a safety to our test to make sure that everything we uh, that all our plants are uh, working as we should for augmenting the flow on Soames Creek. As you might know, uh, some of the water that we're pumping up, we have to flow back, uh, we have to put back into the creek, to uh, Soames Creek, and we have to do a 70 hour to test to confirm if our approach is actually working as, um, as it was uh, designed to do. So that will take place then. Um, further notice will be provided to the community around that in upcoming weeks uh, as well. And um, just like you, we are fully aware that there are several issues that's, uh, that uh, would benefit from being addressed further by MOSI, by Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure Services uh, related to drainage and road conditions. And uh, we try to work with the ministry to uh, to get those addressed as soon as possible. But uh, they are outside of the jurisdiction of the SRD, so we can, we're not responsible for those, but we're aware of them and we'll try to uh, support you in uh, in getting those addressed in a in a reasonable fashion as soon as possible. So I think the next slide, Jesse, is already. Questions, yes. Um, so if there are any questions, please raise your hand that you can do that electronically. Uh, there's a button, raise hand, and then I will see that you raise your hand if you have a question, or you can type in your question in the chat function. Um, Maureen, I see that you have a question. Please be really quiet. Maureen, you can unmute yourself and, and maybe you can ask your question. Ah, <laughs> I'm so used to Zoom. Sorry, I was trying to find the, un the unmute button. Um, uh, a, a, a question that I have is, um, is there any reason that this that the container cannot be stored behind the building, like near the generator? My my concern it this doesn't affect me directly because I live uphill from this, but I'm grieving for my neighbors who live down immediately down below this. And considering that we live in an earthquake zone. Um, and we've already had problems with water runoff. Um, it, it, surely the storage container, container would be safer behind the building rather than seemingly perched right on that very high corner. OK, thank you for the question. Um, just your Cody, can one of you Respond to why this is the most appropriate location for the container. I, I can. I can. Um, from I, can, I, can, I, can. Try it again, Cody. Can you hear me okay, Remco? Yes, I can, Cody. I can't hear anything. Jesse, would you able otherwise to answer the question? Yeah, sorry about that. I just shut everything off and turn everything back on real quick. Hopefully it seems to have solved my audio problems. Um, sorry, the, the question and concern um, is about why the why the location in relation to the plant um, and uh, concern about the retaining wall. Um, 
So all of the project in its entirety, including the retaining wall, uh, was designed with the seismic conditions and the geotechnical conditions in mind. Um, so that both the parking slab that container is going to be on and that wall was designed with the uh, seismic area that we are in, area in mind. Are in, in mind. Sorry, we were getting some feedback there. Uh, thanks, Sean. Um, the I think the location in relation to the building um, is to al allow for the loading um, and uh, connection of the uh, sodium hypochloride lines to the treatment room, which is actually located in that uh, in that in the nearest corner of the building to where the container is going to be located. Sorry. So to summarize it, uh, this is the safest spot to put it. And in terms of alignment of the, the connection to the treatment plant, this is also the best spot to put it. Okay, thank you. Further question. Next is from Tamara and Paul. Please unmute yourself and ask the question. Paul, you are still muted, so I can't hear you. Go ahead. Apologies, Rem. Do you hear me now? Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Just to follow up on Marine's point, the parking situation at the uh, water filtration plant is like an L shape around the filtration plant. There is a 15 by 25 foot parking pad that runs along Fisher Road. There's a 15 by about 36 foot section that runs along the um, uh, Elphinstone Road, which is where you plan on putting the um, structure. If the structure was put where Marine suggests along Fisher Road, it would be in a shady position along the southern wall of the filtration plant, protected by the elements from the southern wall and on the other side by a six foot tall beam with um, cedar hedging going all the way along the top. It would be protected on both sides. Visually, the beam and the cedar hedge will block the view of the storage facility, it won't be as noticeable as it will be in uh, a residential area. If it's if it's on the other side, going on to sorry, if it's on the other side, on the Elphinstone side, sorry, uh, sorry about that. If it's on the other, I can't get the link. To yeah, work. apologies, we've got problems with neighbors who can't get the link to work. If you do put the storage container on the Elphinstone side. It's available for full sun, 24, hour, 24 hours a day, as long as the sun's out. There is no protection. There's no landscaping. There's nothing to protect it from the elements. As far as the impact it would have on the community, it's dominating sitting on a 20 foot wall on the busy street of Elphinstone where anybody who drives by sees this dominating structure. On a personal level, I'm your neighbor. I live right beside the filtration plant. On a good day, if I wanted to, I can reach out and almost touch where you're going to store the chlorine. Whether it's 6% or 10%, from a real estate point of view, we will have an extremely difficult time selling our property with hundreds of liters of what you consider just bleach, what we have taken pictures of is 10%, 10%, oops, wrong picture, sorry. These are pictures I took last year of how you were storing stuff. And you were storing sodium hydrochloride at 10.8%, not 6%. So irregardless of what you store, I will have a very, very difficult time selling my house. The other point they've made is I would have to come in significantly lower than the normal market value by tens, possibly of thousands of dollars. 
I don't know why, when you made this decision, you didn't take into consideration the impact on the person sitting right beside you. Or across You're, the street. Or mm -hmm. across the street, who is Mitch, who is just- I live Mitch. across the street. The decision you've made is going to have a serious financial impact on both of our families to the amount of thousands and thousands of dollars. It will almost make our houses extremely difficult to sell. Why? I don't know what we did wrong to be treated like this, but I would like very, very emphatically to ask you to reconsider your decision and put the containers around the Fisher side where they're not as noticeable, where they won't have the same extreme financial effect on the community that the present location that you are going to put them in will. Thanks for listening to me. And I, actually, one other point I, I saw, Jesse, there. The sodium hydrochloride that you're storing is 6%. Last year, you were storing sodium hydrochloride. I've got the pictures. I went over a couple of times and took pictures. There's usually between 10 and 12 barrels there. All of them were sodium hydrochloride, 10.8, not 6%. And, 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 and sorry to go on, just to read the hazard statement, causes skin irritation, causes serious eye damage, very toxic to aquatic life, very toxic to aquatic life with long lasting effects. That's what you're storing next door to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for uh, uh, those questions or this and those comments. There are several items in there. One is the location and one is the material that was stored there last year versus what we're proposing to store. And I think those are also related to the safety uh, measures that we're taking and that were not in place last year. Cody, can you explain for everybody in attendance, the difference, if there's a difference between how it was stored last year and this year, and how the materials was, uh, the materials that was used last year versus this year. Yeah, so last year we did, we ordered 12%. Um, That's what the original design of the facility uh, called for. But 12% is, like you said, a little bit more caustic. It has uh, some more uh, precautions required when you're handling it. 6% is less than um, household bleach. It's more stable. Um, both of them were sodium hypochlorite, but trade names do change between companies. So last year we ordered from Brentag. This year we'll be ordering from ClearTech. The temporary storage facility that we set up last year, um, I, I seen Connie had asked a comment too about was this part of the original design. It wasn't part of the original design. The original design called for the chemical to be stored in the facility, but there's not enough room in the facility after design happened. And so we decided last year to get a container to store it so that it would be outside of the facility. It has to be outside of any electrical component. Um, and inside the facility, I think somebody entered there, but there is a separate room for the chlorine. So there's not enough room to store the amount of chlorine that we would like to store. Um, we had actually ordered this sea can last year, but because it's custom built, it took a little bit longer than we anticipated for the supplier to um, have it fabricated for us. Um, you did mention about uh, parking it along the Fisher Roadside because it's shaded. Um, because this one is insulated and ventilated uh, according to WorkSafe standards, it the the sun is not going to be well. It's not supposed to be an issue. We have two ventilation systems within this storage container. I'm not sure if, and then I'd, I just also want to point out, so each drum is 210 liters. This spill containment, if there were to be an issue, is 1,500 liters. So even if there was somehow a spill, it wouldn't overwhelm the spill containment within the, the storage facility. I also want to point out that all SCRD staff and the operators in particular, we have multiple tickets that allow us to work with the chemical. Maybe that doesn't make you feel any safer. I can understand that, but we're very um, cautious. We use chlorine at all of our facilities. Um, you know, Soames well had had it. The old Grantham's pump station had it. And so we're very well versed. We and we've never had a spill of sodium hypochlorite. We're, we're, we have very good safe handling procedures that follow WorkSafe as well as our own internal procedures. 
I see that there are some other questions, but there's also a follow up question, I think, from Paul. Can you? Oh, you're still muted. No problem. Apologies, Remco. We're we're not here for our technical expertise. And before we start, like I appreciate you guys have a very difficult job, and you're balancing a lot of things. There's a lot of moving subjects, and coming up at the last minute, this group it's probably just adding to the frustration. So I appreciate the time that you guys have taken to come here. The only thing I will say is, and I appreciate your comments, Connie, is we know nothing about what you're talking about. The only thing I know about is pack past practices. And past practices for us was storage of containers in direct sunlight for five months. In terms of security and caution, I've been over there three times taking pictures. I've been there for 10 or 15 minutes walking around with a ladder, looking over your storage containers, taking pictures. There is no security. There is no security alarm. No RCMP vehicle pulled up to ask me what I was doing there. No SCRD facility came in the next day and knocked on the door and said, what were you doing wandering around our chlorine facilities? I appreciate your good intentions moving forward, but I just want to lay on the table. We are coming at it from the experience we've had prior to this. The security that you're talking about, the structure that you put together last year, and I've got the pictures to prove it, was held in place by six Ziploc ties. Mm -hmm not bolted to the ground, six Ziploc ties. So I, I appreciate everything you're doing, and I'm certainly not trying to be critical or confrontational or anything. I'm trying to make the point that all we can go on is what you guys have done. And the other thing I will very, very, I'm sorry to take over. The other thing I'll be very quick in saying, and I have made the point twice, this is an old community. There are people here who are confounded by downloading Zoom. Heck, I could Mitch, get in. Mitchell, Tamara, and I can't even turn our microphone on. We have people who live here who would not be able to download an app. We have people here who probably don't even have a computer, who don't even know this is happening. We have asked a number of times to come and meet these people. These are people who probably lived in Gibsons all their life, and they're the people that you really should be listening to people who have experience that can help you with your project. We've asked a number of times, come here, meet these people, show them the consideration and respect that they deserve. I won't say anything Thank else. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And apologies, so, I, I certainly don't mean to be critical. I'm just giving you the vantage point of people in the community, what we've had to go through, what we've been waiting for. Sorry we're bringing this up at the last minute. I wish you'd come to us earlier. Just to Paul's point, I'm probably one of the most technically savvy people that you'll meet. And I was told that you would need to download an app in order to get into this meeting. So I tried to log in on my ride home from work and I missed the almost the entire thing because you need an app to to view this meeting on your phone. So well, I have the app and it said the address is invalid. It doesn't work. So when you click the link, it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, luckily I can just run over here. And I was praying you would be on, but you know, it just feels like with all this that's going on, it feels like an afterthought to talk to any of the people who actually live here about it. That like all of a sudden last Friday, we get a phone call that there's a CCAN container coming and this whole thing is happening. Like, where's the consultation with the neighbors about this? Like you're storing industrial chemicals in the middle of a residential neighborhood. That's it seems to me like you would want to inform the residents that that's like happening, that the pump house plans have changed and that there's going to be this container sitting out in the open for any, you know, who knows what can happen. That hill is really dangerous in the winter. You know how many accidents there are from people sliding down that hill? Like our car has been hit just from people. Twice. Yes, unable to control their car. And you're going to pitch a sea can there full of chlorine like it just i don't know what you're thinking in terms of safety and how these things are going to impact the people who live here sorry can i can i interrupt i'm uh i'm actually not philip baron i'm his son-in-law i'm talking on his behalf so 
Paul, who is our neighbor, has made some extremely valid points. So my main concern is you're saying that you're going to be storing this stuff safely. Although, as Paul stated, and I also have a photo, you stored it completely unsafe outside in the direct sunlight where legally it is required to be stored out of direct sunlight and under the mm -hmm. temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. So that the fact that you're saying you are going to be storing it in a safe manner, you've already, you've already proven that that is not going to be done. Um, on the technical matter, yes, um, I agree. This is quite difficult to get people on. Luckily, I was here and able to help my father-in-law, who's turning 86, get on. Um, for security, I work with the RCMP. I'm not a member of the RCMP, but I can tell you there is absolutely no security up there. I've wandered around in the middle of the night looking at things. Nobody's ever asked me a question. I've spoken to RCMP members. They've never had a call to there. So there is no security there. The SCRD has already proven that they are not going to follow safety standards because you stored it outside in the sunlight in a black container in temperatures over 20 degrees, significantly over 20 degrees. So I, and as Paul said, I'm not trying to be confrontational, but my father-in-law just moved in a little over a year ago, and now he's having to deal with all of this. So the concern is, how can we be sure that you're going to store this safely when you've proven that you aren't, or that you, you haven't in the past? So how do we know you're going to do it in the future? And as, as was mentioned, there's, that road is treacherous at the, at the best of times. Uh, it doesn't even take snow. If there's a heavy rain, people are sliding all over the place, and you're planning on storing bunch of chemicals that if something hits that container, it's flowing into Paul and Tamara's living room, and then it's going to flow into my father-in-law's bedroom. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I've got some serious concerns. And again, I completely agree with other people. This seems like an afterthought. This should have been part of the planning process from the absolute very beginning. Not a, oh, by the way, this is what we're doing. Let us know if you have an issue. Okay, maybe I, I let the conversation go on a little bit and I'd better try to direct it a little bit more uh, to uh, Q&A also with staff. There were several remarks made uh, here about what happened last year and there it was information provided in the presentation about how we move from uh, how it's going to be stored and handled moving forward. I think we all agree uh, that last year, given the, and I think uh, Cody Abbott already, our superintendent already alluded to that, because of the 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 fact that it took longer for us to get the container uh, delivered than we wanted, we were not able to um, to use it last year. When we commissioned first commissioned the uh, the well field, it's not that um, it was unsafe how it was done at that time, but it was definitely not desirable. And I think that if is it was one hundred percent unsafe. If you went to WorkSafe BC, they would agree that it was stored in an unsafe manner. I'm surprised somebody from WorkSafe BC did not show up. What I wanted to say is that the information we provided to, to you is that we recognize that it is uh, that it has a safety component to it, and hence it will be stored in a non-flammable, uh, specialized, special constructed container with spill containment in it. So even if it were to hit, that container would not easily bend because you cannot easily move a uh, get a safe container, uh, even if you hit it to actually deteriorate to the fact that any materials that's inside will actually leave the spill containment unit that it will be inside that container. So there are 70 safety features in place. I completely um, can feel that. Uh, what I also feel is that um, residents might be surprised about the fact that um, hypochlorite would be stored 
it was as indicated by uh, a superintendent, it was originally planned to be in the building. And um, I think it's actually safer for everybody, for both staff of the SRD as well as for the community ultimately that it will be stored in a dedicated um, spot outside of the building. And uh, at least that's why we're uh, we're uh, that's why we we went that way uh, that route. Um, anything to add there from you, Jesse or Cody? I see two hands, other hands up. One from Sean and one from Philip. Anything to add, by Jesse or Cody, on uh, the previous items discussed, Jesse? Yeah, just in relation to the traffic safety traffic safety concerns, that's one of the reasons why we chose to locate it on that corner um, because it's protected by the uh, sorry by the large yellow steel gate that controls access to that parking. Um, I'm putting it in the uh, more environmentally sheltered site site uh, adjacent to the building um, puts it at greater risk of impact um, uh, from something coming out of control down the hill. Um, that's the only bit that I got to add. Thank you very much. Sean, I, I see add... you. OK, Cody, go ahead. I just wanted to speak to the security. So last year when the facility was being commissioned and it wasn't fully handed over to the SCRD, I know some people were concerned about um, a, a key being hidden or not having cameras. We don't have cameras. What we have on the doors is called intrusion alarms. So when the alarm, um, when a door is opened and an alarm code not entered, the on-call operator will get an alarm and we do actually go to site. You just might not see us. Um, so if the intrusion alarm was, if, if I think somebody said they entered the building, if it was under our ownership at the time and not Macon still, then we would have gotten an intrusion alarm and responded to the alarm, but we do not have cameras. Um, we, ju we just have intrusion alarms on the doors and the generators, and there is no key stored outside. So that was during construction. It was a contract because we needed to um, have the contractor have access and us have access. So once we've taken ownership of the building, then we get it keyed to our key set and nobody gets a copy. So there's nothing stored on site. It's our key set. That'd be the only thing I had. Oh, and the barrels. I know you guys have pictures. Um, a lot of those barrels, not all of them, but they they um, do. We do store empties there because we always have to have a two pallet minimum. So you might have seen at some point 16 or 12 barrels, and that's so we can have enough that the um, company will take them back. So they're not all full. If that helps. Thank you, Cody. Uh, Sean, I see you raised your hand. I can. Do you want to speak? To, I see a lot of questions you put in the, yeah. in the chat. Do you, do you want to take them? Shall I? Shall we go through them one by one, one, by one, one? or how do you want to do that? One by one would be great, but I just have a question for you uh, because the link wasn't working. I missed almost the entire presentation. Is I see a recording and transcription um, is available. Will that be made available to all of us to view this afterwards? Yeah, this presentation uh, will be uh, uh, uploaded to uh, uh, the SRD YouTube channel and linked to that uh, will most likely also be posted on the Let's Talk. Uh, let's okay. talk Great, page. And, and because none of my questions that I've started asking uh, as of Friday last week to the SRD have been answered, how long do we have for Q&A uh, at this point? Are you guys going to cut us off or can we actually get through all these questions? We have planned to go until seven o'clock, so let's see what we can do. So we have 18 minutes for a lot of unanswered questions here. Um, OK, So there we go. First question, why can't chlorine okay. be stored off site? I think the answer is because there is actually a physical connection of a tubes between the pumps, the pumps that are located within the container uh, and the building so that the chlorine is actually can be ejected in the drinking uh, water. OK, so these pumps, uh, these tubes are leaving the barrel or sorry, leaving the shipping container and going into the building. Yeah. So there's going to be a, a connection, a permanent connection between the two. Yeah. And how is that being encased so that there's no breakage there? What's what's the encasement around that to protect the lines? 
I can, I can answer Remco. It'll be a hard pipe and it'll have a double block and bleed, which is standard for cross connection. So we're going to have a transfer pump that transfers from the storage container to the day tank inside the facility. So and an when we don't pump. do it, what's that? So an additional pump inside of the shipping container. Yeah, just that it's um, an uh, electrical pneumatic pump. So when the the breaker's off, the pump's off. So there's no chance of it siphoning. And it'll be, for those who don't know, a double block and bleed is two valves. And then there's an air gap between them um, so that you have two valves blocking any kind of back siphonage or anything like that. Uh, so the operator will go there, um, open the valves, turn on the transfer pump, then shut off the transfer pump, close the valves, and then the amount transferred will be stored within the spill containment within the chlorine build room in the building. Yeah. And it'll be Thanks. it'll be encased in hard pipe. So it will be non um like if, if it somebody hits it or steps on it, it won't break. What kind of impact rating does it have? Like how many pounds of pressure before it breaks? Uh we're, I think, we're planning on I Sorry, think I would try any... to go. Sean, I, I these are questions that are I think way too detailed for a lot of, and we can discuss those in detail further. But I think I would like to go through some of your yeah. other questions you already asked. Okay. How many barrels of uh, hypochlorite in your text? Do you still yeah. talk about chlorine? It's hypochlorite, which is completely different, are being stored. The presentation, uh, you missed part of it, but we indicated the answer. So it's not sodium eight. chlorate anymore? It's a different chemical? Yeah, but that's not chlorine. Chlorine is different it's, to hypochlorite. No, right. So is it the say is it sodium chloride? Is that what you guys are storing? Sodium hypochloride. Yeah. Sodium hypochloride. Okay. Yeah. So it's chlorine bleach. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Six percent. So there will be eight barrels. If the shipping container is filled with hypochloride, how much supply will that amount to? I think a month, a year. I think the answer is uh, about two weeks. So there'll be uh, deliveries every two weeks of yes. new barrels. Yeah, and that yeah. was one of the reasons. Actually, that was that's one of the primary reasons why we went for an uh, outside of the building storage because otherwise there might have been a need for almost daily uh, deliveries, and uh, I think the risk associated with that would be uh, even higher than um, than the way we're doing it right now. How dangerous is the concentration? Uh, I think we already uh, discussed that uh, at length, that it is a lower concentration than uh, the most common household bleach. What would be the uh, risk, though, if there was a leak and um, three metric tons of bleach went running down our hill? Have you guys done any assessments there in terms of where the runoff can, would go? I can address that. So the, sure. the container itself, um, has self-containment. So if there is a leak from any of the uh, individual barrels, um, there's a capacity for 150% of the total amount that's going to be stored in an additional storage. Should the container somehow get struck in a manner that it manages to break both a barrel and the self-storage, um, the parking lot is sloped to a dechlorination manhole, which is also used when the facility is being tested, and it contains... Oh, you put me on the spot here. Um, I think it's sodium sulfite, which actually re uh, reacts with it um, and dechlorinates the product, both whether it's in water or itself, um, before it enters the environment. And the production, the uh, chemical reaction for that, I think, produces uh, oxygen, sodium chloride, which is table salt, uh, and water. So basically, you get salt water and oxygen. Um, and uh, so that's what would be um, the, the worst that would happen going down the uh, storm drain. So you guys have done spill tests to make sure it actually runs that direction. You guys know which way it's going, okay? Yeah, the, the parking lot was engineered slope to drain. Yes. Okay. Questions? You can skip number. You can skip number five. This was uh, yeah. Number six. number six. We can go to that. Um, number six so is also, also, I think, yeah. related to chlorine, and we're not storing chlorine chlorine it, it here. Is. Yep. All right. Is there number concern six. temperature buildup? No, because we have ventilated. Uh, that's why we have a ventilated container. Is there uh, any risk for uh, with the ventilation? I mean, our, we're very, very close to this. So, what's the risk of you know breathing in? Like, if I if I clean my bathroom with bleach, it, which is a lower percent 
than 6%. Household bleach is like 3% to 5%, I think. What is the, and it, it reeks, like it smells awful. And it, like, if I breathe it in, it, it's like even a small amount seems dangerous. So what is, what is, if it's being vented out into the public, what's, what's that going to be like? Cody, go, would you be able to speak to that? Yeah, so the barrels are sealed barrels. And then when we, we open them, we make a transfer and then we reseal them. Um, because it's temperature controlled. The only way that, uh, I shouldn't say the only way, but chlorine gas is off when it's exposed to air. So even, you know, a pitcher of water on your counter will gas off the chlorine. Um, but because it won't be exposed to air, it won't gas off, for, like out of the container. The ventilation is to keep the container cool so that it doesn't build up heat and cause it to... Um, you know, like it needs to be stored in a cool, dry place. Yeah. But there's I meant more in the event of a spill. Well, the so the reaction like that Jesse was talking about, we actually use sodium bisulfate pucks. Um, and there is no um reaction as far as odor goes. Like it 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 just it, it eats it up like um, But those are those are in the store a storm drain. I meant like inside the container because the container itself vents out to the public, right? Oh. So in this spill containment, there is dechlorination pucks in the spill containment itself. So as soon as there's a spill or in, a possible spill, it'll just be dechlorinated right away. It's it's right in the spill containment. Oh, I see. Okay, great. What are the procedures uh, for handling? I think these are. Uh, I think yes, rubber gloves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Respiratory equipment. Do you guys have to use that when handling this? We don't have to use um, like certain gas cartridge, like like half mass or full face mask. We can just use, um, uh, you know, like the paper ones that people wear for COVID and stuff like that. Okay, so when you guys and handle this, you need to wear apron, rubber gloves, and masks on your face. Is that right? Well, or we can use some of the guys have. Um, clothing that doesn't react if the bleach gets on it. So you can use that. You can use rubber apron. You should use a rubber apron. Yes. Face okay. shield. You don't need a respirator. You can just use a face shield and goggles or and or goggles. Sounds pretty toxic. Sounds like sounds like a dangerous chemical if, if trained professionals need to wear all that in order to handle it. But um, so I, I'm also concerned about like the aesthetic of living in a neighborhood and right out my front door, not even on the across property for me, but 20 feet closer than it ought to be in the middle of the Elphinstone Avenue right of way. There's people handling dangerous chemicals in face masks, rubber gloves and aprons on a very regular basis. And I have to look out my front door at this every time I leave. So that's, Jesse, I, anything? I don't even know what to say about that, but. I'll, I'll, I'll just add some clarification. Um, so like the, the storage and handling side of the shipping container is going to be facing the water treatment plant. Um, but also just with regards to the safety equipment and stuff, it's the same recommendations that would be on the material safety data sheet for the bleach that's in anybody's home. And Clorox disinfecting bleach. So Clorox is probably the most well-known brand name of bleach is actually 7.5% in concentration. Um, you can jump on the Clorox website and check out their household disinfecting bleach solution and it's 7.5%. Um, so while we do uh, abide by WCB regulations uh, and guidelines while handling the chemicals, it is um, a, a safe product that's used like in 78% of all water treatment plants in North America. Um, the remainder of those plants um, using uh, either a similar, var similar variation of that chemical or chlorine gas, um, which is something the SGRD has moved away from um, because we recognize the hazards of chlorine gas. Um, so just wanted to put that out there. Thanks. Yeah, and and I want to say, yes, um, we take stuff safety very seriously, and that's why we take the precautions that we have to take. And that's also, of course, uh, regarding from WCB and other uh, regulators of our work. Um, Paul, I see I your hand up. Is about that related? based on the previous storage of chlorine that you guys do take this and treat this seriously uh, and and safety is at the forefront but but I'm not gonna 
I, I appreciate you guys are going to these great lengths now at this point, um, but that hasn't been the case in the past. Um, sorry, I, I don't mean to hog everyone's time. I just wish these questions were answered earlier. Do you mind if we go to number nine? I first want Paul. You had a remark. You had a you had a follow up question on, on any of these, or you're muted again. Sorry, I I can't unmute you. Apologies, Stemco. We're taking up time trying to find where the microphone is. Just to follow up on Cody's comment about the security of the yellow fence, the yellow barrier. The yellow barrier is closed possibly 10% of the time. Last summer, Mitchell and I oh, even, yeah, there's... even decided that we would take it upon us ourselves to go and lock up because we had so many instances of people driving in here, smoking, partying, leaving their beer cans, and then taking off. So I appreciate Cody's comments that the barrier is going to help us. It will only help us if you ask your staff to close it 100% of the time. And lock it. And lock it. As for the lock, the key that was found on site, that was me. The reason I found it was not because I was going around wandering, and I appreciate who's responsible for the water treatment plant at which time or whatever. But I do know it's a $10 million facility, and sitting in my bedroom, I can hear people say, where should I put the key? We're going to lock up. And they'll say, go put it in the stone. I walked over the other day. I saw a plastic stone that you buy a Canadian tire. I opened it up, I walked over, I opened the door to the $10 million water treatment facility, and I walked in and I looked around. I did that twice. Nobody arrived. Nobody came to say, Mr. McKeegan, what are you doing in our facility? Nothing. The final point that I'll make is imagine this winter driving down Reed Road towards the filtration plant. The road is not plowed. You're going a little bit too fast. You can't control your car. You continue going, you miss the turn. You know what you do? You drive full speed into the generator. There is no protection at all other than cedar edges. That would happen if the snow and that was on the road. It could be a weather situation where that diesel generator is crucial. There is zero protection for it. And it has happened already. As Maureen has pointed out, we're holding, and I apologize, we're holding your feet to past behavior, but that's all we've got to go on. That road has been missed a number of times. Fortunately, there was not a $100,000 diesel generator sitting there. Today, there is. This winter, there will probably be somebody who misses that turn. The road is not plowed. Paul, and... To your point as well, um, I mean, the answer isn't more infrastructure. The answer isn't more barricades. The answer isn't more deterrence to stop people from being able to drive there and, and more concrete. The Like you guys have plunked all this in a residential neighborhood, not even on the contained in the property boundaries of 850 Fisher Road. This is now fully into the Elphinstone Avenue right away. You guys just can't keep adding more and more infrastructure there. It, it's not right. Okay, I want to advance. Um, there were some other questions you still had, Sean. That my are they still? They are. Yeah, they're still. Some of them are still valid. Um, um, has a leak simulation been performed? I think we sort of talked about that. Number ten yeah. is, has the visual impact of an industrial shipping container parked in the middle of a road in a historic residential neighborhood been considered and have the residents here been notified and consulted with? I think we know the answer to that, but but what what, what do you guys have to say about the visual impact of this being plunked? I think, I think what part of the part of the presentation was that we're going to uh, work on landscaping as well as wrapping and clearing off the container to make it less uh, a visible uh, object as it is uh, compared to what it is right now. And uh, the change for the landscaping plan, uh, there will be additional landscaping taking place uh, later this year. So more information to come on that as well, uh, because we recognize that there is opportunity, a significant opportunity to increase uh, the landscaping. So you, know, you guys, uh, 
Sorry, just to interject, you do say you don't plan on landscaping, but there's no room. Like if there's a steep hill and it goes right into a road and already that road is way skinnier than it should be because of this encroachment of that parking pad into the Elphinstone Avenue right away. There's no room for big trees. There's no room for anything that grows tall enough to shield that. doesn't matter what you do. We will see a giant shipping container there. Yeah, I don't think that the shipping container can be hidden other than by, uh, I think it will be noticeable, but it doesn't mean that there is no room to improve the, the landscaping on the property. So um, stay tuned on that one. And why is chlorination happening in the density property area? Because there's no other opportunity. And it's actually all our other wells and even all the swimming pools on the coast. And uh, Director Toth just indicated on the chat also behind uh, the water treatment, their water treatment facility in downtown Shisha, the water resource center. There's also a similar type of container built. So it is um, this kind of containment storage units are used all over the place for the purpose of storing these materials. Um, and last year, as uh, Jesse indicated, we, our main uh, source uh, treatment plant, the Chapman treatment plant, we invested over $2 million to get rid of the handling of the chlorine there because there was chlorine used uh, there. And we also moved to uh, this product because it is just the most safe product. Is it entirely, it's not water. It's not, it's, we have to chlorinate the water and this is the only way we can chlorinate the water. And this was always considered out, uh, to be part of the project. Uh, because of the outside storage, I recognize and I fully um, acknowledge that the exact the fact that there is an extra uh, element beyond on site, like a big container, is a visual um, is a visual uh, impact to the community. And I realized that did we um, could we have improved are and could we have avoided this kind of almost rush uh, meeting as that we have right now uh, with earlier communication maybe last year about the fact that this was coming um, yes the answer is yes to that there is no um, we could have but um, so there there is some there is a lesson here for us to learn as well doesn't mean that uh, we're not taking your concerns seriously as they are presented today. Um, the container is already on the coast. It is located currently on one of our other sites. And um, yeah, that's that's where it is right now. I'll just uh, I'll just add to uh, um, sorry to GM Remco's comments uh, just with regards to um, why the chlorination in a residential neighborhood. Um, Every single water source that the SCRD manages um, has some volume of chlorine stored on site. Um, the volume of chlorine is uh, directly related to the volume of water that's produced um, by the varying sites. Church Road is the third largest by volume um, production site on the coast. Uh, it's third to Chapman and the Pender Harbor treatment plants, um, which both have similarly large volumes um, comparatively to the volume of water they store. Um, and the Church Road um, treatment plant is a significant safety, and especially environmentally uh, improvement compared to the original source down the, down the way. Um, the Grantham's well, and like that was down by Soames Creek, um, all of that infrastructure down there contains the same chemical. We've just now got a much safer spot to put it uh, compared to a, a treatment small treatment building that was almost washed away the last time we had an atmospheric river. So um, I just wanted to add that in. It, it's, a, it's a very safe, relatively speaking, or these probably the safest, which is why so many plants have gone to it, uh, treatment method for water. Um, and uh, it, it happens in every residential neighborhood that has a water treatment plant. In such close proximity to houses and on, perched on the top of a hill and also on a road that was just washed away last last year in the atmospheric river. I mean, there's a lot of like, well, this doesn't seem like a very stable we, area. 
we recognize the issues with with the road and the SCRD does its best to follow up with MOTI in, in regards to those issues. Um, but the site specifically uh, has been engineered with those concerns in mind. Um, the site itself is not subject to washing out and it's been engineered and designed to withstand those kind of conditions, uh, including uh, seismic events. Okay. Paul, oh, one more for you. Maybe. One more. I'm going to be quick, Remco, and I'm going to talk about not talk about the past anymore. I will talk about the future. And to follow up Thank on you. Sean's point, the location of the structure, I think you guys are committed to putting it on the present site. The one comment I will make is you should come down and drive down Elphinstone Avenue and take a look over to the left and look way, way up at the dominating structure that looks over this community. It's a design that would make Donald Trump proud. <laughs> the second point I'm going to add is I appreciate all the input that you guys have given us tonight. I appreciate it's a difficult situation for you guys to come here and listen to all these types of questions. I'm not going to say you should have come here earlier, but I will bring up one point. Mitchell and I will suffer a huge financial hit if you put this structure in front of us. We will have a difficult time selling our house when somebody says you have hundreds of gallons of chlorine, whether it's 10%, 8%, or 15%, they'll go to the next property. We are going to take a huge financial hit based on your decision that you have spent the last hour justifying. What do you tell us to soothe our anger that your decision is costing us thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars? Waiting for an answer. Yes, and I think it's it's fair to say um, that that is not an easy one for an easy situation. It, it is an assumption you're making, and I can still totally see why you're making that assumption. And it's not something that I have an easy answer to at the moment. Hands up, everybody on the SCRD board who would buy a house with hundreds of gallons of chlorine sitting outside your bedroom window. Jesse, would you buy that house? I see, I see uh, our director Thoth raising his hands. Director? Thanks, Ramco. Um, yeah, I would. If I could afford to buy a house in your neighborhood, I absolutely would. Well, you can buy ours because we want to get rid of it. <laughs> You know our name, you know our number. Let's talk a deal. We'll give you a I wish I could afford to buy in your neighborhood. This, we bought this house as a retirement dream. We moved here from Toronto 10, we moved here from Toronto a year and a half ago. And I apologize, Rimko, I said I wouldn't go on. I don't usually talk this much ever, but this was our dream house. This is where we came to retire. We had done our research. The Sunshine Coast was the place to live. We have neighbors from hell. No disrespect, that's you guys. We have had parties next door. We have had complaints about parties next door. And we have had emails from SCRD staff, and I can forward them to you, saying it wasn't a party. It was a regular scheduled maintenance appointment. Between 1230 a.m. Yeah. and 430 a.m. Yeah, they're on the cameras, too. They'll show up at like 1 in the morning. Yeah plunk something in our driveway, go over in the middle of the night, do whatever, play their music. And well, I, I don't think any of us want to beat a dead horse. We are a resource for you guys to help this project move forward. You should have come to us a long time ago and got us on board, and you would have gotten the support of the community to move forward. You could have got advice from the community to, this will make us look better. This will work well for us. Just, I, I'm going to finish really quickly. Will you throw us a bone and move the structure to the Fisher side of the road? I cannot confirm if that's feasible and, and, and actually safe to do at the, as we speak. I will have some further conversations with the people on that uh, and see if that is even a safe option because as we discussed earlier, or as was indicated by our manager of the project, Jesse, is that it might be even a less safe option. Uh, I can see that from your perspective, it would be visually 
a way more appealing option. So I will have conf we will have further conversation about that. I, I appreciate that, Remco. That's a fair answer. And when do we expect that answer from you? June. June? June what? June first? Oh, soon. June. Soon. Very soon. June. Because June is better than soon, Remco. No, uh, no. It, it's to be honest. This this container is, as I indicated, it is it is on the coast, and it needs to be in order for us to have this well uh, operating this summer, as indicated before. We need to do a certain test, uh, the seventy hour test, and that's currently scheduled for April, and that would allow us to get the approval in time for the summer. If we it's, don't it's, go ahead, I apologize, Jericho. Yeah, so things are a little bit leapfrogging because the, we cannot um, we cannot do that test without the ability to chlorinate the water. So um, that's why we need to have the container in place and uh, all the pumps uh, connected, et cetera, and the connection with the, with the plant established and tested before we can uh, do that test. So we'll have a conversation. I will have a conversation with staff, with the, the, the other staff here on the, on the call and others, to see what what is what is possible um, in terms of timelines. But this is not a matter of uh, weeks or months. This is a question of days or hours. So um, for us to get to to a point that we know where how to how to advance this. I don't like asking these questions. I find it very difficult to be in this situation, but the addition of chlorine to drinking water in Canada has been going on for a hundred years. It's a fundamental of building a design plant that you will have chlorine added and you will have to store chlorine. We're being told this is crucial that has to be decided at the last minute. We find that really difficult to take into consideration when you're decisions are affecting people in this community mm -hmm. to a severe degree. And you're saying, give us more time. Like, and, and I really apologize. I really don't want to be in this situation. I think you guys have backed us up against the wall. What I can, the only thing I can say there, and I understand how are you feeling, uh, Paul? Um, I can, I, I, I have empathy for you that you feel that you're currently being put up against the wall and um, that's not how I would like you to feel. I appreciate it. Yeah, the, 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 the hypochloride, as indicated, was, was always intended to be stored in the building. I think it was maybe not identified that early uh, or the on in the project that it was always part of the plan that hypochlorite would be stored on site. And um, I think that's part of why it's now the double of and a container and the fact that you are now uh, fully aware. Uh, I think as this meeting uh, very clearly shows that hypochlorite will be stored on site. And it's, it's just a basic requirement for us to uh, to, to provide drinking water is uh, has come to the forefront. And I think that's a learning that I have for uh, future projects uh, is the fact that we need to be way more clear about the fact that hypochlorite is part of the, 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 the components of a wastewater or water treatment plant. We, um, did, know, we did know you were going to store that there just not in a giant sea can on a parking okay. pad okay it was on the modi right of way That's i didn't not know part of the original plan like all of us neighbors who lived here knew what was going on okay but there was, there was no mention of a sea can and storing huge volumes of chlorine so that seems like you guys made an error and now you're trying to plan around the fact that the building can't contain the chlorine which honestly doesn't really make me feel like you're making good decisions that are thought through and you know discussed and planned properly. It seems like an afterthought that you're gonna order a CCAN and put it there just on the parking pad. Okay. Also- Remco, can I just ask, what what is our follow-up process here? Because I send emails to you guys asking questions and I don't get answers. 
And it's only in moments like this where, you know, you guys are actually able to answer these things. And, and after this meeting, I have a lot more questions, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, what's the, how, who can I write to and, and what can I expect in terms of responses? Or who can I call and talk to on the phone? I think the best way to contact with us is still the Let's Talk page. That, that, that email is monitored and we respond to those questions that are being uh, there, put there. Um, we received a lot of questions about this item early on in the week. And instead of addressing all those emails individually, this meeting was scheduled and that's why it's always recorded. It's also recorded because I think all the questions that were uh, all the all the appropriate questions that were asked are being answered. I think are being are answered to our the best of our ability during this during this event. So let's talk. That will be continue to be the venue uh, that we communicate. Um, There's severe time constraints on on this though. Like, how can you answer? How can you appease? like an entire neighborhood's questions with such little time. Like this isn't enough time to get all the information we need. There needs to be some sort of ongoing, more transparent communication here that the whole neighborhood can see. So let's talk, you're saying use let's talk, right? To, to add, uh, sorry, sorry to butt in Repco, to add to Sean's comment, you are only talking to the residents of Grantham's Landing who have apps on their computer. Like I've been through this before. There are a number of people here and they're the people who have been here the longest who don't even know about this, who can't download an app. We're having enough problems with it ourselves. Mm -hmm. When are you gonna come here and actually meet the people here? I'd like to take you guys and show you what your shipping container looks like. From, from our, from our I'd like to take you to my master bedroom and point out that's where your shipping container is gonna be and ask you, have you ever lost 10 or $20,000 and not been upset or $30,000? The answer is no, I have never been in this situation. Uh, I've, I've, I've had been in a situation where my property uh, value was impacted by other developments, but not maybe to the extent that you're just, uh, to, to, that you're just describing. We are planning to be in, a, in the neighborhood um shortly but what i will this as indicated before i will regroup with my staff to see what we can do in terms of timelines etc and i think that will drive a lot in terms of when we can actually uh if there's uh, timelines for decisions for us when the need when the container really what is a drop that date for the container to be installed and based on that we will provide further information on the let's talk page so uh, of course, the upcoming Easter weekend doesn't make things easier, uh, but Tuesday morning there will be an update um, posted. I can, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday by noon there will be an update posted on the Let's Talk page, and um, and there will be yeah further further clarity provided there on next steps after this meeting. Could you arrange to have a walk around with Mitchell? Tamara, Sean, and myself, and we can actually walk you through what our concerns are. We'll drop the trip to the bedroom off. <laughs> you won't have to do that. Okay, I think, thank you for that. I can't I think, just, like, we are a resource that you guys should have used way, 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 way earlier. Like, we don't want to be in this situation. We want this thing to go smooth. Okay. I will, and we're prepared with you. I'm thinking you could consider placing that seeking container there you're on you didn't really discuss your i i still like i don't feel like my questions were answered and i don't feel like you know the concerns that are being raised about the planning of this thing are being addressed i don't think plunking the secan container down there at this point like i think you guys should really think about what your other options are and think about proper planning the storage of the chlorine rather than just pushing this through you know with the way that you're doing it, it doesn't or seem go right back to the original plan that you guys must have had about storing it inside yeah, of the it building it doesn't seem right it doesn't seem like you care about the people who actually live here beside this 
this plant. It's like an industrial plant now. And, you know, just like gave us no notice and it, it doesn't feel like it was planned or well thought out. Seems like an afterthought the planning and the consultation with the neighbors. Okay. One last thing, I think we're, I think most of the arguments have been discussed now and heard, um, which, and I think we tried to do it in a respectful way and I appreciate that. Uh, this was not easy. And um, I, I heard an invitation and we'll definitely consider and uh, follow up with you, Paul, Paul on that one. And uh, Mitchell as well. We're over, here. We're over here so we can get the coffee and donuts ready for when you arrive there. Oh. Get the state. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Ramco, and thank you for your team for Th coming. Thank here. you all for your time and yeah. uh, the time you took and the energy you put in it to. Um, I see two hands up. One of them is from one of our directors, so I need to go to that one. Director Stanford, over to you. Uh, yeah. Yes, I hope you can hear me. Um, yes. I just want to uh, sign off by thanking everyone, uh, staff, for taking the time. Uh, I know this was a fast turnaround and there's a lot of information to impart here. I also really appreciate um, the respectful manner from the community. Uh, we do need to continue to talk from a regional perspective. We um, this water is very necessary for the summer so it is tough the, there's I, there's nothing easy here we do need this water for summer um so we have to come up with some kind of solution that supports water for the region as well as a safe community so i recognize this is hard but i, I really appreciate um having this opportunity today so, so thank you Okay, thank you all. And um, more to follow on Tuesday morning. And um, I'll be working on Elphinstone in the near future with you. Thank you very Thanks, much. Marco, you did a good job. I appreciate it. Job well done. Thank you very much, Paul. Bye bye. No, there's. Okay, guys, I got to...